Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back, everybody. Michael Lafito. Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host. You're in the right place. If you want to work smarter, not harder, you want to increase your average sale price. And whether you're with a boutique or a large franchise, newer agent or seasoned veteran, there's going to be something for everybody. As always, Check out some previous podcasts by going to LuxuryListingPodcast.com or go to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and leave us a review if you're getting value from these podcasts. Today's guest, I'm really excited to bring him on. I've known him for years, and one of my taglines is, it's not the market, it's the marketing. And so being creative, thinking outside the box is something that I really take pride in. And uh, today's guest definitely... Uh, stands out. And we're going to be talking about building a brand that stands out and how to be creative uh, on properties when you represent sellers or even when you represent buyers, how to be a visionary. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring on today's guest. And and again, if you have questions for today's guest, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And I'll make sure today's guest, Nick, gives his contact information. And as always, if you have questions about previous episodes, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. And don't forget, each Friday, we do a free live stream. We push it out on multiple platforms. You can go to luxuryfridays.com, luxuryfridays.com. We typically uh, stream that at 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, consistently, unless I'm traveling or have a conflict. So you check out luxuryfridays.com. All right. Today's guest, uh, recently, uh, I've known him for quite a few years, was introduced uh, to Nick Tiger Quay, Nick Tiger Quay out of the Miami market. And I was introduced to him through a good friend, Peter from Box Brown. He said, hey, this guy's creative like you are. You guys got to meet. And uh, that's how you and I met, Nick. So first off, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. And um, so tell everybody a little bit about you. And I, you've been licensed for uh, about 17 years, you told me offline. And so you're a licensed agent, you're in Florida, uh, you're doing South Florida, you're doing some really cool things. You have a smaller team, you work with both buyers and sellers. But uh, pre-COVID, you were telling me uh, you worked with a lot of foreign national buyers, but of course, COVID with travel, that kind of limited things. So tell everybody a little bit about your history and where you are today. All right. Well, as Michael said, my name is Nick Tiger Quay. I've been in real estate for 17 years down here in sunny South Florida, serving a lot of the waterfront areas around Miami and also Fort Lauderdale. Uh, as Michael said, I have a small team. I prefer it that way. Uh, I like to go, give a lot of time and attention and care to all of our customers. And I feel like that's one of the things that really separates us as a team down here is we have more time for people. Um, you know, as Michael mentioned, yeah, you know, before the pandemic, 85% of my client base was foreign nationals that were buying or selling here. You know, Miami's been a booming city for many years, and we've had a huge influx of, you know, what I call piggy bank buyers is foreign nationals that have an opportunity to either move some money out of the country or need to have some kind of a tax shelter. And so Miami is a beautiful place. It's a great place for them to come visit. And it's also sometimes kind of an ego boost for them to be able to say, hey, I own two condos in this building or I own the penthouse here. And so the point is they use it like a piggy bank, because if you look at the American market stability versus the foreign markets, especially Central and South America that I specialize in, we've always been significantly more stable. So where they might lose 30, 40% of their value with their currency or 50 or 60, which has happened, ours stays pretty high, right? So even if they're, uh, even if we sell for less money here, and this is how I did this last year, we had a Brazilian buyer that had bought when the market was upside down uh, for him with his currency. We sold it for $300,000 less than what he paid for it. I didn't sell him the original unit, but I helped him sell it because of the currency exchange. He still made money. So, you know, it was a million dollar property. We sold for $300,000 less and he still made money. Well, with the pandemic, 
that entire buyer pool dried up. So now I've been focusing. You've had to recreate on, yourself a little bit. I, like yeah, I had to recreate the vision. Right? Yeah. So now what we've been doing is we've been serving single family home communities. We have condos everywhere too, but I like single family home because they see my sign. And when people see your sign consistently in one neighborhood, your name spreads around a little bit more. Plus I like walking my dog and paddle boarding around the waterfront community. So that's kind of been the shift that we've had is moving into serving locals and people now obviously relocating as well. But yeah, now we have 85% domestic buyers. Well, probably 75% domestic buyers, 25% for national still. You know, you're based in Florida. Florida is booming. Um, I just saw a recent agent count, realtor count, state by state. And Florida used to be number two behind California. Now you guys are number one. There's over 216,000 realtors, excuse me, uh, uh, the number that I saw is, yeah, 216, 399. So over 216,000 realtors in Florida. Everybody knows a real estate agent. So what we're talking yeah. about with Nick Tiger Quay today is how to build a brand that stands out. So everybody knows a real estate agent, probably in your town that you're listening to, uh, but definitely in the Miami market as well. And so those of you that haven't seen Nick or haven't met Nick or haven't seen him on video, you know, he literally came up with the nickname. I don't know how you came up with the nickname Tiger, but you've leveraged the Tiger and you had leveraged. You got a Tiger head. You've shot videos wearing the Tiger and it's a way to stand out. And let's talk a little bit about how that came about. About the nickname? About the nickname and then how you leverage the nickname and you started to incorporate yeah, so, the tiger the tiger head into some of your videos and your marketing. Well, the nickname, I got something right here behind my desk. So this is actually this. So I'm, I'm holding in my hand. Um, I'll give you a quick version here. Um, so I was raised in a military family. My father was a retired U.S. Army colonel. And right here, if you see this, I know you, you guys at home can't see me on video here, but Michael can. Tiger, sir. So my dad was actually the commander of the Steel Tigers back in the uh, late 70s. And I was born in 1980. And so I didn't really realize this actually until years later, but I was always like a little tiger. I was always very rambunctious and outspoken and courageous and daring. And I took chances and sometimes things that you shouldn't do as a kid, which I'm sure a lot of us did. And that's kind of where the name sprang from. And, uh, you know, I was always like my mom's little tiger cub. And then it was my nickname. And I went by Nick Tiger Quay for many years, but it was Nick Tiger Quay of Nick Quay Real Estate Group or Nick Tiger Quay of Pell Quay Realty. And we never really leveraged the tiger part of it. Okay. And I was doing a, yeah, I was doing a branding exercise with Inez. Oh, you know, Inez. Yes. Yeah. So Inez is phenomenal. She founded Miamiism, still the number one blog down here in South Florida for anything real estate community related. And we're doing a branding audit. And I was the bow tie guy. Then I was the paddleboard realtor. Then I was the bow tie paddleboard realtor. Nick Tiger Quay at Nick Quay Real Estate Group. It was too much. You know, the logo we created was my wearfare glasses, my, my hair at the time when I had more hair and the bow tie. And what we did is we merged it all into the tiger. So then it became the tiger now has hair, glasses and a bow tie. And that's simply the logo. It's a real simple logo. It stands out. Every time we wear the logo embroidered, we created these beautiful PVC, PVC patches, like okay. the bubble patches, but really high end stuff. Michael, we just posted a video on our live stream a week and a half ago, when I got the hats finally made, I must have had 20 people on my Instagram alone ask me for a hat. They go, I want to be your brand ambassador. I want to wear a Miami Tiger team hat. So anyway, we, we kind of doubled down on the Tiger. People have been calling me Tiger, including Peter. When, when Peter from Box Brownie introduced you and I, he probably says, Michael, this is Tiger. I don't think he used my name, Nick. He, he, he and Brad always call me Tiger. But the point is, we created this whole thing behind it. What is a Tiger? What does it really mean to me? And we kind of took my business ethos already and the way that I serve and the way that I protect others, the way that I fight for people and look out for them and protect them. Well, there's a lot of similarities in character traits that match what tigers do and how tigers protect, you know, their packs. And so we really leverage that in a big way. And now my entire team, you know, they start off as a tiger cub and they have to kind of earn their stripes and earn their way up a little bit. But everybody got really into it, you know, um, and, and the, the best thing from a team perspective is when it was the Nick Quay real estate group, every time I interviewed an agent, one of the questions they would ask me is, when are we going to change it from Nick Quay real estate group to the Quay Smith team or the Quay Michael team or the Quay Lafito? And I'm like, no, no, you don't get it. 
But with the Tiger team, not one person has ever asked me if the team can be Tiger Lafito. Not one person, not one person. So it's, it's been a beautiful thing that everyone else around me has been drawn in and adopted the same kind of tiger style mentality that we created for real estate. And that's been the most beautiful part of it all. Well, it's, it's definitely a differentiator. And those that are listening, I'm certainly not suggesting you come up with a nickname or you bring in, <laughs> you bring in things, but it's one way that differentiates yourself, uh, Nick, from uh, the competition. But let's fast forward here today. I want to talk about, you know, we're talking about building a brand. Um, you know, you had mentioned to me offline, uh, again, I'm a marketer. I think like a marketer and I know you do the same and I know you work with buyers and sellers, but for today, I want to focus a little bit on our job as agents. Our job as marketers is to accentuate the best features of a home and a location and, and get the seller top dollar. Well, some of the properties that you represent, Nick, some of the properties I represent, some of the properties our listeners represent, they they're good from far, far from good. In other words, yes. you've gone through a home and you look at the photos and you walk in and you're like, wow, this, this doesn't look anything like the photos, right? There's that letdown effect. And sometimes the properties that we represent are entry level, they're starter or their average price point po- properties. And the owners don't live in the home and they don't stage the home. They don't unclutter the home, even though we make all these suggestions. So we're only as good as our sellers are willing to cooperate with us at times, right? And so, you know, you were telling me, I, I once sold a home that had over a hundred taxidermist animals in, in it. And, and they did have an estate sale and we did neutralize and we did stage, but sometimes you have homeowners that won't do that, right? And so you are telling me about the cat house. Tell, tell everybody oh, yeah. about the cat house and so, tell me about the challenges that you had and how, what you did to accentuate the potential and where it is today. Yeah, that's a great one. So we're calling it the cat house now. This is in a city called Pinecrest. And anyone that knows South Florida knows Miami Pinecrest. It's right next to Gables Estates. It is one of the most sought after zip codes. One, because of the public schools. Two, just because proximity to everything. And there's a Trader Joe's, a Whole Foods, anything high end and luxury you need is within minutes of Pinecrest. Anyway, the point is it was on a main street, very high trafficked house as far as the drive-by uh, it was gated on the outside it's beautiful I had this big beautiful gate lush lush landscaping that was overgrown and i remember when i got the phone call i uh you, you know it was one of those phone calls where the the, the seller's kind of testing you a little bit and trying to see if you'll say yes over the phone and i was like well he tells me the opportunity and i know there's a catch i know there's a catch i'm like this guy's not telling me something and so he goes well i need you to tell me right now will you take the listing and I said, 100%, yes, I can sell it. And then he was silent. And I was like, oh God, what did I get myself into? Well, then he kind of chuckles and he goes, okay, I'll see you there at one o'clock tomorrow, whatever it was. So I show up at the house and it's this beautiful gate and it's this big sense of arrival. And then I start getting closer down the driveway. You know, it's almost an acre. So I get closer down the driveway. I pass the oaks and I pass all these beautiful tropical trees. And I see this house and I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of dumpy for a million dollar house. We have a lot of teardowns in that neighborhood. So what people are doing is they'll take an older home and they'll they'll raise it. They'll basically tear it down or they'll save a wall or two and they'll build something new or we do a full renovation. Well, as soon as I saw this thing, all I could picture in my head was a, you know, at the time, a four to five or six million dollar Mediterranean or modern house on it. This house was not that Um, long story short, the cats. So I go in and he's standing outside and I actually saw a few cats in the yard greeting me as I pulled up to park my car. And he goes in and he throws me the key and he goes, here, I'll see you inside. And that's not normal. Well, let me tell you, as I'm walking up to the house, I can smell something that's not normal for a house you would want to list. <laughs> so needless to say, <laughs> the house had about 17 cats living inside that had lived there for many years. And there, there was other things at play here that we don't need to get into uh, right now. You know, some personal issues and other stuff that happened that, that created a really tough situation. And it was a family member that contracted me to sell the house. But anyway, we were able to help the seller who really needed it, needed a lot of help and needed to get top dollar for this house that we couldn't take anybody inside. Um, you literally couldn't step inside. It had the stench of cats. And so we, we used about five gallons. I say we, I hired a company to use about five gallons of industrial bleach. And three days later, 
uh, including painting and a seven person crew, it still wasn't palatable for everybody to walk inside. And so right. what you have to do right. in even a situation like this, yeah, even with all that. Hi, it's Michael Lafito here with a quick break from the podcast. If you are committed to increasing your average sale price and you want to work smarter, not harder, then you want to visit LuxuryListingSpecials.com for more information on the Lux designation along with some free resources. And now let's get back to the show. And so what we did is I created a beautiful video. Uh, a friend of mine lives around the corner, has this big, beautiful house with a 30 foot swing in the backyard. So it's me with my tiger helmet on swinging in the swing. Hey, this is Nick Tiger Quay. Today's not about tigers. Today's a story about peacocks, because in Pinecrest, there's wild peacocks that roam the neighborhood. And so I spun this house that you can't even take photos of and we can't film inside of. And I spun it into a community video about Pinecrest and about what it's like to live in Pinecrest. And because I knew this was going to be a developer's dream or an end user was going to buy and build a dream home, I walked around to all my favorite dream homes in the community. And we shot about the different architectural types and the trends in the community and the benefits of living in Pinecrest. The house that I designed as I'm walking down the street, I gave my vision of my dream home that I would build there. Five car garage. It has a man cave slash loft or an office above has a little window to look down onto your trophy. I like cars. I have a 67 Camaro. I want to be able to see my 67 Camaro from my office because I can on that kind of a house. It has a pool in the back. And the second you open up the front door, you know, 20 foot or whatever, I, I think I had a 20 foot wall of glass, uh, 12 foot doors. I wanted big, big, big double doors. You open up into this big view that goes through the house, over the kitchen, into the pool. Well, guess what these guys are building right now? I found the perfect buyers. I double ended the deal, had listing and selling side. And they're literally building my dream house that I created for the video. And we're, we're about to list it somewhere in the, you know, six to seven million dollar range. But it's, it's crazy that you could take something that you can't market, that you can't go in, that nobody can go inside, and then you could still turn around and do a video. So the, the moral of the story, and you know, Michael will echo this as well, you have to be creative. And as, as Michael said, we have houses that have taxidermy inside. Photography is easy because we have Photoshop. You, know, you can do a full digital renovation with our friend Peter or, or, or Brad if you really wanted to, but video is the hard part. So the... the the heart and the soul of the marketing side for me has always been video. So even when I can't go inside the house, even when I can't film, even when it's dated or there's privacy issues or they have a baby or they have an art collection, they don't want to show. It doesn't mean you can't do a video. It just means it's an opportunity for you to step up your game and for you to do something you've never done before. You've never seen before. That's what I like. I want that challenge. I love to sell a hard house. And we, we had this house sold, Michael. We had the house sold cash within, I think, three days. And it was a teardown, a complete teardown. And it was sold before our crazy, crazy. So you, thing. you painted the picture, you painted the potential and I told the story. You told a story. You told yeah. stories sell, right? You think about church, you go to church, some of the most popular churches, you got a pastor or you got a reverend that tells great stories and they tie in the Bible yeah, yeah. or they tie in what it's not just preaching, right? It, you're, you're be a great storyteller is the moral story, but tell, you know, don't be a BS or tell stories and tie in, you know, you can tie in metaphors or whatever to, you know, to hammer home your point, but be a great storyteller. That's, that's a great point. And and sell the potential, sell the sizzle, sell the potential location, location, the amenities, the schools, the area. Most people have a tough time visualizing. I, I tell agents all the time, only 10% of buyers and 10% of buyers agents can visualize. In other words, 90% only see the cat house as it is. So you had to take the other and you had to show the potential. So that is a great, uh, a great reminder to our listeners is if you're selling a home that doesn't photograph well, you know, you don't have to show everything. You don't have to show Correct. the bathrooms if the bathrooms are dated. You don't have to show bedroom two, three, and four if they're cluttered. I, I'm no. putting a house on the market. It's in the private network right now and they're original owners. And I mean, literally, we are going to potentially have a showing. And thankfully, we canceled. But I had to climb over tons of they, they literally donated 70 bags of clothes. I mean, they had clothes and clutter. They had three dumpsters. I, I had to climb over things to open the blinds just so that 
people could see it was literally it was very difficult and so you have one time to make a first impression nick and so i commend you and photos are one thing but video and painting the picture is another thing so talk to us a little bit about some of the other creative things you've done whether it be in video or photos or marketing yourself because today we're talking about building a brand that stands out and we got nick tiger quay here he's definitely built a brand uh but what else do you got well, a few things. Uh, I have a concept that I created called Roaring, since I'm the tiger and all. And okay. it's it's several. So ro Roaring to me is something that I've been doing for a long time. Didn't even know it. I've been roaring since I was a little kid. It's how I stand out and serve others differently. You know, and so basically on the business level, Roaring would be, it's not about being the loudest or the brightest or having the Lamborghini or wearing the Chanel bag or the purple hat, whatever it is. It's not always about standing out that way. It's about standing out for what you believe in and standing out in how you serve others and standing out in how you represent yourself. So that, that to me is the key to roaring and been the key to my success. When I realized the value in this, and when I realized, I, I'll give you a really funny example. When I realized the value of stockpiling cleaning supplies, and I'm stockpiling small amounts, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, and paper towels at the beginning of the pandemic. Why? 85% of my clients were foreign nationals or not local. So they were coming down from New York. They were coming in from Brazil. They were coming in from other states and cities, and they could not get any of these supplies here. So something as simple as that, grabbing it to give it away, to serve others, to provide, to say, hey, listen, Steve, don't worry about it. I know you're coming in from Jersey. You got your parents coming down. You don't have to worry about toilet paper here. I got you. It's a really funny example, but these are the kind of little things. Something else is how you serve the community. I've been involved in the community for years. I serve on a board here in my city. I helped found the Sea Level Rise and Resiliency Committee, which is a big deal. Where, you know, I live on an island. Um, that's one way that I roar is that I serve and I give back, but I don't, I don't do it quietly. I'm not the loudest person in the room, but I stand out. I have an opinion and I stand hard on my opinion when I know it's backed up by facts. And so the point is, that's something that, that my whole team does differently. If you look at our videos and our advertising, we roar there as well. You know, we're about to post a video today of um, <laughs> my 67 Camaro was in the shop, was supposed to be out and it wasn't. So I wanted to shoot video. So I, I rented a Maserati Gran Turismo convertible. It's loud. It roars. So everything we do kind of follows that line where if we're going to do a video, it's going to be in a really raucous, fun, wild car, whether it's a Maserati, a Porsche, my 67 Camaro, you know, one of the girls on my team has this big red Moab Jeep with big beefy tires. We, we kind of enjoy standing out, but it's not just about the visual. Like I mentioned, it's about your service. So when you can roar and you can really back it up, when you can back up your theatrics and you can back up the crazy videos. And, you know, when I can back up wearing a tiger helmet, running around a multi-million dollar home, and I can back it up with my experience, with my knowledge, my wisdom, and my abilities, that's truly, truly, I think, when you found your roar, when you found your voice. So I'm not, I'm not saying go and do crazy stuff. I'm saying learn how to back everything up that you're going to do and then show people, tell people, don't tell people you're the best, tell people by giving, not expecting anything in return. And these are the kind of things that are going to separate you. So listen to what I said again, give to others expecting nothing in return. That's, how, that's actually one of the ways that you're going to grow your business the most. It, give it truly to others is. and expect nothing in return. The best way, lead with a giving hand, be a giver. Yeah. You know, Nick, you, you mentioned a couple of things that I just want to reiterate. Again, don't, you know, you have to grow your knowledge. You have to grow your tools and your resources and your deliverables as well, because there are a lot of agents out there. There's more licensed realtors now than ever before. I think we're going to see a thinning of the herd as the market shifts, perhaps. But again, many agents are looking for that quick dollar. They're looking for that quick video to be funny, to be different, but they don't back it up with experience. In other words, you it's always about the client. In other words, Nick mentioned he goes across it goes in these $2 million properties he represents. He might do a video with the tiger helmet, but it's with the client in mind. In other words, how am I going to position this home? How are we going to get more qualified eyeball traffic and more qualified showings to get the seller the top dollar? There, there's many agents that don't think that way. They think I got this $2 million listing. I'm going to leverage it. And it's all about me. And whether it sells or not, I don't give a rat's patootie. That's not how you get 
referrals. And so that's probably what I'm going to wrap up today with Nick, because we have uh, some other uh, business to get yeah. to. But well, I think the the one more thing that I can add, and so where where the paddle boarding and the tiger and all this came into play for my business, it was about my passions and who I am as a person. So I think the number one, two pieces of advice I can give you, have a social object in your business. So what, what we did is we took my paddle boarding off my business card. I might put it back on because honestly, it was my favorite card ever, but my social object is that I'm a paddle boarder. I'm actually a racer and I coach a special Olympic team, but that's a big part of my brand. So when you follow my content, the paddle boarding, who I am, what defines me is in it. We're not saying I'm the only realtor for you. We're saying, here's something I do different, follow my passions. So the reason I'm saying this, if you're a ballerina, incorporate ballet. If you're a violinist, play violin in your listings. If you're a yogi, guess what you can do in every single property? So it doesn't have to be just about the property. For the new agent that doesn't have any listings, do community-based videos. Give yoga tutorials in a neighborhood that you want to sell in, right? So I think that's really the key component. Don't focus so much on what I do. Focus on why I do what I do, and then you'll be able to find your own way. You'll be able to find your own tiger, your own paddle boarding, whatever that means to you. So that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give away as a branding expert. If anyone has any questions, I know you can call Michael. You guys can reach out to me as well. Nick, yeah, what's, the best, what's the best way for a listener to, to follow you or get in touch with you if they uh, you know, want to? I'm, I did something really smart. I am Nick Tiger Quay everywhere. Facebook, no, I, I don't have realtors on LinkedIn, but if you want to follow me and see what I do day to day, Instagram's a really good example of the passions. You'll see me driving in my 67 Camaro. Uh, I have a meeting after this with one of the mayors. We're doing a community art project that I'm helping spearhead. So, you, you know, it's an opportunity for you to see how I serve the community and, and what really works for me. And that's where most of my referrals come from. Well, we'll leave it with that. Nick, Tiger yeah, Quay, thank you. thank you. Great information. Uh, South uh, South Florida, some really great content there. Again, if you're looking to stand out and build a brand, you need to be able to deliver. Like Nick said, you can't just have this brand that doesn't deliver. You're not going to get the referrals. Again, some really great information there. If you have questions, uh, please shoot me an email, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. This is another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. If, if you're getting value from this, please leave us a like, leave us a review. Our guests aren't paid. I'm not paid to host this. We're just trying to raise the bar in the industry and the highest recommendation and thank I can get is if we've earned a five-star review, I'd appreciate it. Again, check out LuxuryFridays.com, LuxuryFridays.com. If you want to join a live stream, we can bring you on as a listener. We can bring you on and you can ask me anything and we have guests as well. Again, my name is Michael Lofito. Keep raising the bar for whatever you do and prove others wrong. Until next time, thanks for listening to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specials Podcast. Take care, everybody. 